and welcome back to Coffee's Crafting Corner. We're gonna do the four patch. Um, like I said the last time I was working on a project, um, I just put this down and thought about a heart quilt because um, of Valentine's Day and that's next month and it's only a couple of weeks away. So I'm gonna um, get started on that um, project, which I did get started on it, but I mean, when I get started, I mean, really uh, step my game up and move a little faster because I don't have that much time to get it done. So with that said, I wanted to show you, for example, I did cut out a heart. This is just a sample heart. I did not put it on a fusible because I just wanted to see what size I wanted before I wasted my fusing paper. And I figured this was this would be the size heart that I want to use. And I think I'm going to use it as part of my border. And um, I'm going to make them in all different flavors. But it's all going to be in the color scheme of the quilt. Okay. Um, I, I've already started cutting out my blocks. I'm actually making four patch blocks, some pinwheel blocks. And those are the two blocks that I'm basically using in this quilt. Pinwheels and the four patch. So this is the four patch, and as you can see, the points are pretty much perfect. And for um, the four patch, I'm not, I'm not only using two colors, I'm also using four colors, as you can see, because I want a lot of craziness in my quilt. And as you can see, the back is nice and flat. And that's what we want. We want it nice and flat, okay? Um, so we're going to get to the cutting part, and the instructions are here for the four patch. We're going to cut two three and a half inch squares. This is my fabric A, which is my light color. That's the color I'm going to use for my fabric A. Fabric B is going to be my contrast or my dark color and i'm going to cut two three and a half inch squares out of this now you're going to need your cutting mat i have a three and a half inch ruler you may not have this you might have a ruler like this and you can use your cutting mat and size it up for three and a half inch squares once you do the three and a half inch squares and we sew them together your total block should equal out to six and a half inch square blocks. And that's what we want for this quilt that we're gonna be making. Now, I'm gonna be moving fast with my quilt and I'm gonna keep coming in and showing you how to do a block. And you can um, quilt your quilt at your leisure. Um, or you can um, quilt it to a certain point and I will do that for you because I want to show you how to do a sandwich. Um, and so I'll be simultaneously doing two quilts at one time, trying to get that one as a sandwich to show you and to finish my actual quilt, okay? So with that said, let's get the cutting. So I'm gonna take my fabric A, these are my little scraps. I'm still working on my quilt and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna stack mine together because I can cut more than two pieces of fabric. If you can stack four more pieces together, that's okay, don't worry about it. Cut where you feel comfortable, and that's what I say. Do what you feel is comfortable for you. And I usually line my fabric up against the grid, the line grid, because if you notice, if you don't, when you go to put your ruler on and the lines are not, adding up or uh, or lining up i mean then what's going to happen is your square is going to be crooked so i try to make sure that i'm on this line this grid line when i go to cut so that way my squares are squared and they're not crooked so i'm going to go go ahead and cut this using my three and a half inch square ruler and see, this is a, a, a turntable mat, which is really convenient. So when you can't um, 
get around your table. You can just turn it and get where you need to be. And that's where I need it to be. So I'm gonna close this up. Even though I don't have children, I try to close this up so that way I won't cut myself or no one else will be cut. All right, so now I'm gonna set this to the side. This is a little bit of scrap I have. I can't use that. And I'm still gonna use this, but I'm gonna cut this little piece off here because I might be able to use this for a cornerstone or something in the future. No telling what I might use it for. Okay, set that to the side, like this, and I get my arm ready. So now we're gonna put our four patch together and it's gonna be pretty side to pretty side. And I just want you to know that I'm always on your four patch. Oh, look at that. It did not cut in half, I cut it on the fold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors because it's gonna still be all right. It's okay. There you go. Take my scissors, okay. And so we're gonna put our blocks just like this. And this is how your block should look, okay? So now we're gonna do pretty side to pretty side. I wanna make sure of that because this is some pretty fabric and sometimes you can't tell what side is which. So that sometimes fabric is like that. So now I have these together and I'm gonna chain sew these together and then I'll cut them at the end. I normally don't pin these because they're so easy, easily meshed. Um, your fabric, if it's um, cut correctly, it will lay together real nice and smooth. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here to the sewing machine. And as I stated before, I have a, a Juki QBP 2000. I've already set my settings for a quarter inch um, seam. I also have a magnet that I use um, to make sure I do a quarter inch seam. And I set it on my machine where the mark is, right at the foot of the presser foot. And then my machine tells me I'm on quarter inch, which moves the needle to the quarter inch. And then I change my stitch size from 2.0 to 2.4. I like um, using that stitch length, okay? So now we're gonna do the quarter inch and I'm going to sew this a quarter inch and then I'm going to chain it and then we're gonna press it after we finger press it to the dark side. Press the foot down. I'm up here with my quarter inch seam and now I'm sewing it. And I stop there and I'm just gonna add this other piece right along and it's gonna sew it right along the quarter inch mark. Now, I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna measure. I want you to see, this is a quarter inch seam. Let's see if I can't show you this. I don't know if this is going to work, but here's your quarter inch seam. This is the quarter inch seam, and this is where your quarter inch seam is. And I hope you can see that. If you can't, I'll get my daughter up here next time. <laughs> How about that? That's some photography for you, ain't it, folks? <laughs> so now we're going to press this to the dark side. And press this one to the dark side. Finger press it to the dark side. And now we're going to arm this. So, set this to the side. And here we go. Now, when I say arm, 
I don't actually mean iron. We're not gonna be doing this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna press. And this is all we're doing is pressing. Just press. That's all you have to do is press it. And as you can see on the other side, it's nice and flat. And I'll show you that. See how flat this is? It's just really flat. And that's what you want. So now we're going to take the pretty side to the pretty side. And see, all we're doing, if I can show you this. All right, so all we're doing is flipping this over and we're gonna sew a quarter inch down the line. Back to the machine. And we're gonna put the presser foot down. We've already measured already. Now, when you're doing projects, depending on when the last project you did, you want to make sure that you change your needle when you start a new project. Make sure your bobbin is full. And one thing I forgot to tell you when um, I was putting these together, you have to nest these two seams. When you nest these two seams, you see how one is going this way and the other one is going that way. So when you nest these two seams together, don't worry about where you start out here, if it's a little off. Just as long as these are nested, okay, and you do a quarter inch seam, we should be good to go. So now, I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna press this, finger press this, finger press it, and then I'm gonna come back over here to the iron, and I'm gonna press this down, and we're gonna measure and see if, in fact, whether we have a voila moment. And so all I'm doing is just pressing this down. And this is a nice and flat block. And the points are perfect. Look at that. Voila. And the back. You see that? It's nice and smooth and it's laying flat. Now I know some people open up their seams and iron them open. I don't. I just leave them flat like this. It works for me. So now we're gonna see if we have a voila moment. So let me just move my little makeshift ironing pad. And here's my grid. And it says, Voila, exactly six and a half, six and a half. And I am thrilled with that. So this will be added to the quilt board for the quilt. And stay tuned for the next video um, on the pinwheel. Now, um, that's a little bit more, but it's still easy. And I'm gonna make sure you know it's easy. Um, so if you like this video and you learned how to make a four patch for the first time, click like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next time. Well, well, goodbye, adios, and I'm going to learn how to get these bye-byes going for you guys. All right, take care. God bless.